Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens, I'm in Kiva, Uzbekistan, and this is an ancient mud brick walled city. Today we're gonna explore the city, we're gonna visit some of the most famous historic, beautiful historical sites. Uh, we're gonna eat some of the local food within the city and outside of the city, um, and then we're just gonna explore and go on a full Kiva tour today. And you step into the city and immediately you can see one of the main landmarks, which is a minaret that is, it was only half built, it was never finished, and so that's why it has, it looks more like a, like a stump, but it's still beautiful. The turquoise is shimmering off the sun. And by the way, if you haven't seen this entire Uzbekistan series, we started in Tashkent, we then moved to Samarkand, and then on to Bukhara. I'll have the link in the description box, all the videos, you can check out the videos of this entire series. All the food, all the historical sites, it's been incredible. If you stand at the base, the minaret is massive. It's not even half complete. This was going to be the highest minaret, but at the time that it was being built, the Khan, he passed away during its construction, and then the next Khan, after following after him, did not want to complete it. And even though it was never finished, it's not that high, it, it still dominates the skyline. It's made from sheep? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh wow, oh that's amazing. So part of the part of the culture of Kiva, the ancient culture, is wearing sheep sheep wool hats. And it was worn in both winter to keep your head warm and then summer to block the sun. And that actually really does block the sun. I can like it's providing shade for my eyes if you can see if you can see in there. Oh and it, it's very comfortable and stylish. stepped into a courtyard now and just, you walk through the, it's, it's kind of like, I mean, it's brown from the mud brick and the mud walls and then you step into this courtyard and it just opens up into this unbelievably vibrant blue and turquoise and the geometric designs and patterns. It's kind of just like a, a window almost. With One of the beautiful things about Kiva is that it's still an ancient city where local people live and so there are still mud uh, houses built from mud, there are ancient alleyways. Right now we are walking kind of in the touristic center of the city where a lot of the visitors come to see the main attractions but what's cool is that the entire city is still functional. People live in the city um, and still within the walls. There are two main finished minarets and one of them you can climb to the top so it's going to be really cool to climb to the top. Uh, that's what we're going to do next. Kind of a rickety wooden staircase. And then we're going to enter the minaret right here. Oh wow, this is going to be very cool and very steep. Stepping into the minaret right now. Oh, you have to use your own flashlight? Can I see everything? Yep, I'm good. Okay, and then you come up a little ways, and then you do have some some air going up, but this is just straight up through the darkness. We've emerged into the light. Didn't take too long to climb up, but it's kind of like you're on your your knees and your hands, kind of crawling all the way to the top. Oh wow, I can feel the air. So it's kind of a workout. And the wind is just whipping through the through the windows. That that was cool. Very cool. Oh still gotta go down the, the staircase. Well, yeah, that's one of those staircases where you can really fill it in your thighs. My thighs are shaking a little bit. You know that feeling when you go up, a, up and down a really steep staircase? Partly kind of like the nervous shakes and then partly just the muscles being used. But yeah, that's given me some good exercise. I'm very, very hungry now. Oh yeah, I can still feel my, my thighs are still kind of shaking. Oh man, from climbing up that minaret. These little gazebos are one of the greatest parts about dining in Uzbekistan. You can just lean back, relax. I mean, you can't even like fully put your legs up. You could even take a nap in here. 
but we've ordered something that's called guma, which is a local specialty, uh, kind of a snack in Kiva. The tea. Tea. Three times. Two, two, three times, yes. <laughs> Tea is consumed with every single meal in Uzbekistan and one of the, the customs is that you pour the tea three times into the cup, pour it once, put it back into the tea kettle teapot, pour it again back into the teapot, one more time back into the, the teapot before you serve the first uh, cup or almost like a bowl of tea and that's just the ritual, that's the custom of drinking and serving tea. <sighs> Okay, so it's called guma. It's deep fried so you can see those blisters, but you can smell the dough, you can smell how it's just been freshly fried, and then I think they're stuffed with a combination of meat and spices and onions. Welcome to Horizon, welcome to Hiwa. Mm. 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 Oh yeah, crispy and fried, but like gooey on the inside. You taste the layer of, the thin layer of meat and onions. It's really light. And just kind of kind of goes down easily. Chase that with some tomato cucumber salad. Mm. Mm. And the dill. Yeah, it's all of that. The tree. Oh, that was just so chillaxed with the breeze chilling in this little cabana. This is one of the most iconic sites of Kiva. It is a 10th century mosque uh, with a hypostyle hall built from wood and it's been rebuilt I think a number of times but each one of the 213 columns, wooden columns, are every one of them is unique and some of them have been replaced but there are six of the 213 columns that are original 10th century and here's one of the original 10th century columns. It's just like an entire tree, but you can see the carvings, you can see how many hands have touched this. Walking around this morning has been fantastic, but we're stopping at a restaurant, it's a tea house, to drink some tea, to eat some salad, and also to try a signature special dish from Kiva. Fresh bread right out of the oven. Mm. Mm. It's like half crackery, half fluffy. They brought us out some of the salads. This one looks like a roasted eggplant salad. The vegetables here in Kiva in particular are really good. Mm. Mm. Oh, that eggplant is so creamy, fluffy in texture. The main dish that we came here to eat is called shivit osh, and it, they are noodles, but they look hand cut like a, like a dough that's just been sliced, but they're bright green because there's so much dill in the noodles. They top it with a beef stew or some kind of a meat stew. There's potatoes in there, there's onions, there's tomatoes, and there's carrot, and then served with a little bit of cream yogurt on the side. Hi guys, good morning. Oh, that's amazing. It just explodes with this like refreshing dough flavor. The noodles are gummy and it's unlike any other Uzbek dish that I've had so far. I'm gonna try to fork. Fork it this time so you can see the strands of the noodles. Oh, that one is good. And as always, wash it down with hot tea. Now we are ready to go eat some more. Oh, cool flag, Mike. I do not want to get rammed by him. From the first lunch, we are moving on and there's a lake, or maybe it's a river, but we're on our way uh, to go eat some fish at the river and right along the water. I love fish. They have these little minivans, and I mean mini minivans, uh, but we're gonna jump in one, they are the taxis, and then we're gonna go on our way to the, the I think it's the river to go eat fish. Yeah, we're cool. Can this be hearing? You okay? Yeah. All right, oh, an immediate departure <laughs> as soon as you step in. <laughs> it's like a two -point. This 
this is like a rickshaw but with more walls. That was a little bit of a bumpy roller coaster ride, but that was pretty fun. We made it to the fish restaurant. I guess it is kind of like a, a lake or a pond, but we're gonna sit overlooking, or actually above the the water and eat fish. Come boil up. The fire is still going, they're still heating up the wood uh, and they're gonna grill the fish, but we also got a fried fish which has just arrived, so we're just gonna snack on the fried fish before the grilled fish arrives. I believe that it's like a type of carp, freshwater fish carp. Mm. You gotta be careful of all the little... And then there's also a tomato, like a tomato puree to dip it in. Mm. Mm. Oh, that tomato sauce, it's awesome. Really refreshing, like foamy pureed tomato. Probably with onion and garlic and cilantro in it. Um, and then seasoned it with salt and then covered it and now it's just kind of smoking, hissing away. You can hear it like pop every now and then. He did that so swiftly, upsided it down onto the plate and now it goes into our little hut. <laughs> the owner of the restaurant, he is slicing up the fish, almost like a cake, slicing it into pieces and dishing it out for us. And the owner is a really nice man. And you can see the, it is kind of bony. You do have to navigate the, the bones, um, but I'm gonna try it first and then I'll try it with the tomato sauce again. Mm. Oh, that's really nice. Because they grilled it on such a hot fire, it has a really nice smoky flavor. And then he heavily salted it. You can really taste that, that burnt salted flavor. And it is a freshwater fish, so it does have a little bit of a, that muddy, earthy taste to it. Just adds the refreshing touch. What I'll do for my next piece is grab a piece of bread, mop up some of that fish, and then dunk it into the tomato. Yeah, it goes well together. And that completes the Kiva fish experience. That was great. This is just a local spot. Cool, it's breezy, it's really nice. Now back into the mini minivan, back to Kiva, Old Town. The sun has just gone down. It was a spectacular sunset this evening. Um, and really the, the minarets just lit up, just glowed with the reflection of the sunlight. That orange yellow light just trickling across the entire old ancient city of Kiva and the mud brick walls. For dinner tonight, we're eating a dish called Golopsi. Stuffed peppers with some minced meat, it looks like. And then there's some uh, braised carrots and potatoes. Is it a pepper? I think it's a pepper, right? Um, cut open to this. Oh yeah, you can see it's there's rice in there. There's minced meat. And then it's all wrapped up. It feels very soft and very tender. Let me grab that bite right there. Oh, It's very soft, very tender on the inside. You can taste onions in there, the rice. It sort of just all melts together. It's a little on the plain side, but kind of like tangy and sweet from like the tomato-y carrotiness of it. It's okay, a little bit, a little bit plain, but it is like a very kind of like soothing kind of dish. And that brings us to the end of this day, but it's been a fantastic day, just walking around, exploring. I liked especially being able to walk around on foot. From here, we're just gonna go back to the hotel, but then tomorrow, which I'm gonna include right here within this video, uh, we have a very special opportunity to go over to a local home. I think it's right within this old city uh, to cook and then eat. It's gonna be a very special meal, but good night for right now.
And good morning, we are in a local neighborhood a little bit outside of the main city walls and we have been invited over to a local home where they're gonna cook for us some local dishes, some Kiva, some Kiva style Uzbekistan food. I've arrived to the house, we're gonna go in, we're gonna greet them and get started cooking and I'm very excited for this meal. This is gonna be so awesome because it's such a different experience to have home cooked and just family style Uzbekistani food. We're gonna be first cooking a dish called Tuhumbarak which is a, it's an egg egg pasta like pocket kind of ravioli kiva style and like many occasions when it's something fun to do Micah just passed out well, that might be the most productive most effective egg beater I've ever seen Out, but it has quite a lot of elasticity, so you really has to work that dough. Working the dough, making it really paper thin, uh, wrapping it around a long, uh, rounded stick, and then keep they keep rolling it thinner and thinner. They're putting it together with water so that it has a little half moon shaped little pocket. Okay, cool. We're going to be stepping outside to cook the rest of the, to prepare the rest of the dish. But out here, there's a courtyard, there's a garden, the fire is burning. They're going to boil the, the dumplings here. They poured the egg mixture into a tea kettle, which is going to be the the spit get. So they're gonna pour that into the little ravioli dumplings and then immediately chuck that into the boiling water. The smoke is blazing, the fire is is hot, um, then there's, they're just floating around and they just do it one by one. It's gonna be so good. Little pockets of egg. They boil for a few minutes and then for the finished ones, she takes them right out of the hot water and I think into a cool water bath. It's such a cool process and it takes such delicate hands to be able to add the egg, then pinch it closed and drop it into the water. All decorated. There's little candies and fruit and tomatoes and drinks and the just the decoration and the being, yeah having the privilege to dine with the family. The aunties are so nice and friendly. This is awesome. We kind of dip it into the the yogurt. These are little beautiful one biters. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's really good there. The wrapper is kind of gummy. Then you've got the the egg. It's like kind of like steamed boiled egg in the center. And then with that cooling yogurt, mm. it's like pure home comfort food. Mm. And Uncle has poured us some red wine for us and like the entire family to share, which is a very kind gesture as well. It's very special. Sweet. Mm. Yeah, this is a local wine. It is very sweet, and just to be welcomed into the family home, it's, it, yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Man, of course, melon is like one of the kings of all fruits of Uzbekistan. Mmm. Oh wow, that's like honey sweet. So juicy and a little bit crisp. We have a surprise. They especially, they made us a special dish of plov, which is the rice pilau, uh, Uzbek style. But they, 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 the aunties told us that we cannot leave their house without trying their plov. But even after I try it, I might not want to leave. This is a plov from this region of Uzbekistan. I've had plov already like maybe five or six times in Uzbekistan, but this will be my first home cooked 
anti-prepared version. You can see the carrots in there, the rice, the meat. I'm gonna grab a bite with a little bit of everything. Mm. Oh man. Mm. That's delicious. You taste the meat. Then you really taste the sweetness of those carrots. And opposed to as opposed to the restaurant versions, it's much less oily. Much less like greasy heavy. Lighter and more like it just tastes more like home cooking. And there's very little, if any, spice in it. Mostly just relying on the sweetness of the carrots. And then just a slight meaty fragrance. Thank you very much. This was very generous, very, um, very special for us. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. Oh. Wow, that was just the greatest way and such a fitting way. That was our final meal in Uzbekistan in this Uzbekistan food and travel video series. Those little egg dumplings and then followed by the plov, the pilau that was totally unexpected. Uh, the food was great, the home cooking was, I mean, it's, it's, it's different than restaurants and it's the home cooking, the love just showed through the food, all of the aunties and the entire family. Uh, they they welcomed us into their house out of the graciousness of their hearts and that was just spectacular. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this entire Uzbekistan food and travel series. And if you haven't watched this entire Uzbekistan food and travel video series, they're all in a play, all the videos are in a playlist. Link is below in the description box. So click that link, check out, watch the entire series. We started in Tashkent, uh, then we proceeded on to Samarkand, then to Bukhara, and finally ending in Kiva. Uh, but it's been a fascinating journey learned so much about the history of Uzbekistan and this entire region of Central Asia. I uh, met some incredible, amazing and generous people and the hospitality in this region. And then of course the food. Man, I have eaten a share of lamb and mutton and meaty things and plov, but the food has been incredibly delicious. And I'll have some links in the description box below, some of the people that have been in the videos and the people that have helped. I wanna say a massive thank you to Bek Cruz, who organized everything through the Ministry of Tourism Uzbekistan. Uh, huge thank you for the invitation to visit Uzbekistan and to explore this beautiful country. And that's gonna be it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for watching the entire series. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe and also click that little bell icon so that you get notified of the next video that I publish. Goodbye from Uzbekistan. Thank you again for watching and I will see you on the next video.